Good morning. Grace and peace to you in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, and welcome to worship here at the American International Church. Let's enter a spirit of worship together. Would you join me in our call to worship? A new day has dawned, a new year begun. O Lord, call us so that we may hear your voice. The world turns to hopes and dreams of the future. O Lord, keep us in your ways and on your path. We enter this new year with hope and excitement. O Lord, remind us that you lead us. O Lord, guide us as we look to you and worship you. Amen. And now would you stand together as we sing our opening hymn.
scripture this morning is from the book of Matthew, chapter 2, verses 1 through 12. After Jesus was born in Bethlehem, in Judea, during the time of King Herod, Magi from the east came to Jerusalem and asked, Where is the one who has born, been born King of the Jews? We saw his star when it rose and have come to worship him. When King Herod heard this, he was disturbed, and all Jerusalem with him. When he had called together all the people's chief priests and teachers of the law, he asked them where the Messiah was to be born. In Bethlehem, in Judea, they replied, for this is what the prophet has written. But you, Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, are by no means least among the rulers of Judah. For out of you will come a ruler who will shepherd my people, Israel. Then Herod called the Magi secretly and found out from them the exact time the star had appeared. He sent them to Bethlehem and said, Go and search carefully for the child. As soon as you find him, report to me, so that I too may go and worship him. After they had heard the king, they went on their way, and the star they had seen when it rose went ahead of them until it stopped over the place where the child was. When they saw the star, they were overjoyed. On coming to the house, they saw the child with his mother, Mary, and they bowed down and worshipped him. And then they opened their treasures and presented him with gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. And having been warned in a dream not to go back to Herod, they returned to their country by another route. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. God, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts be pleasing and acceptable to you, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. I love the story of Epiphany, this story of the Magi coming from the East to find and worship the child born as God with us, God incarnate as a human here among us. I love that these magi came from somewhere else and seem to have discovered through their astrological practices, through their observation, most likely of Zoroastrianism, to have discovered Jesus in some way through their own culture and their own faith. That's got some beautiful implications for our own interfaith ministry in a diverse city like this. I love that it was nature that led these magi to Jesus, that they stared up in the night sky and found a star that seemed out of place and somehow followed it to find Jesus. I think I've had some similar experiences on a particularly cold, clear night when I could see the Milky Way with the naked eye. I love that the Magi coming to worship also brought them into conflict with King Herod. I think we still find ourselves in positions like this at times today when we come to this sanctuary, when we worship and we proclaim that someone is our king that isn't of this world. I think in these ways, and in so many others, we're all like the Magi. We are all chasing stars. We're looking for ways to experience God, and we're looking for signs to guide us. We're all staring up and looking for some hopeful sign that God is at work in the world around us. But if we pay attention to the story, not everyone in the Epiphany story that Jonathan read for us heard this same message of hope, love, joy, and peace that we celebrate each Advent and Christmas. At least, not if you were to ask Herod about his perspective. Herod the Great was a client king uh, overseeing Judea under uh, Caesar Augustus. His maintaining his kingship in Jerusalem required that he maintain control, that he keep his region calm 
and keep it loyal to Rome. So Herod's life was defined by this pursuit. He renovated the temple in Jerusalem and undertook massive building projects to beautify the area of Judea and to leave behind his own legacy of greatness. But the flip side of that is that his legacy also became one of brutality. In the verses after the passage we read this morning, we learn that in his fear about the message of Jesus born King of the Jews, he would order the massacre of the innocents, the killing of children all around Bethlehem to try to eliminate the baby Jesus. Outside of the Bible, Herod is known to have had at least one of his wives and multiple of his own sons killed in order to maintain his control because he was afraid that they were plotting against him. Herod was paranoid. And in Herod's fearful perspective of the world, when these magi from the east come to, to say that they are coming to worship a king who has just been born, Herod can't hear a message of hope. Instead, Herod hears this message that the world is much bigger than anything he can control, that something transcendent, much bigger than him, has come into the world right in his own, at his own back door, and he is fearful that this is something he can't control. Even the Magi could see that this thing was so significant and so powerful that it somehow threatened Herod's sense of certainty, his sense of his grip on the world around him. So for Herod, the revealing of God at Epiphany sparked more fear and deepened his paranoia instead of prompting any sort of awe and wonder that we might celebrate as we look to the stars in some way today. You know, though, if I'm honest, I think I can sympathize with Herod a little bit today on the 2nd of January, 2022. We're entering this new year with a sense of immensity and out of controlness that I think few of us can remember experiencing. I don't need to spell out all the things I'm hinting at here. They're coming to your mind right now. But in a normal year, many of us would be taking steps right now to exert control over things more than we did in the fourth quarter of last year. We plan schedules and travels. We make goals for our businesses and for our work life. We make resolutions about how we are going to do better and be better in the 12 months to come than we have in the previous 12. We aren't feeling paranoia per se, but some legitimate fear because of things we can't control this year. Because we've spent the last couple of years learning some difficult lessons about the world. It's a much bigger place than we often thought. And we've seen the ways that even nations and governments that we so often depend on have been unable to control things that we know we can't as individuals. And at the same time, haven't we learned some other lessons as well? We have learned that the world is more interconnected than we ever knew it was before. Your behavior affects me, and mine affects you. The way we behave and the, the ways we travel and the small decisions we make, like this, affect people that might be thousands of miles away from us at this point. And even here, as we come to worship, once upon a time, it would have just been us in this room worshiping with the words that we hear in this space and with the songs that we sing and the prayers that we pray. But right now, we're joined on a live stream 
by people who might not even be here in London, but are uniting with us in worship and in prayer. We've learned that the world is beyond our control, and so we have some options. I think we could try even harder to control our world. We could start this new year with even more ambitious goals and resolutions. I've seen friends offering this approach on their social media accounts, sharing with me and others their 22 goals for 2022, or whatever the case may be. And I've sort of presented this as not the best option, but really, it's not a bad thing to try to control the things that are in your control. And then the opposite option might be that we decide, you know what, a lot of things are uncertain and out of control. Why try to control anything? I've actually seen this one on social media as well. As people point out that always striving to be different and better can indeed lead to a harmful lack of self-acceptance. And so there are certainly reasons for us to consider giving up on these resolutions because these big goals may not be the healthiest decision for us this January, at least. But for those of us who woke up yesterday and maybe still today with some lingering sense of fear about a world we can't control, for those of us that can sympathize with Eric just a little bit, about news of a world that is so much bigger than anything we could wrap our grip around. There's a deeper truth in the story that we've heard this morning. What is revealed, this epiphany in the birth of Christ, this declaration that the world is immense and that Magi from the East can see what we can see, need not be a fearful thing. We do not need to follow Herod's example and to make our decisions for this new year based on fear alone. A friend of mine shared a beautiful story with me just yesterday. He told me that his home was not always a pleasant place growing up, and that often his parents have accused him as he's grown up of running away from home. And he said, yeah, that is sort of the case for me because as soon as I could go off to university, I left. And uh, I would often try to resist coming home ever. But he said that scars would always bring him home. You see, at his childhood church, Sister V and Sister Wanda would bake these little star-shaped pastries on whatever Sunday morning was closest to the New Year, and they would share these pastries with everyone who was at church that day. And my friend would sneak out the back of the sanctuary, downstairs to the kitchen in their church, to watch Sister V and Sister Wanda make these pastries. And of course, they would reprimand him and tell him to go back and listen to the sermon and to grow in his faith, but he would hide just outside the door because he wanted to be close to these women cooking for the church. And so as he grew up and went off on his way, he would always say that he was not going to go home for Christmas because it just conjured up these terrible feelings of his childhood that he didn't want to spend any time dwelling on. But every year, Sister V and Sister Wanda would send him a very simple message. They said, tell him that we still have his stars if he decides to come home. This simple message we still have your stars if you decide to come home. This is the message of epiphany for us this new year. Because the truth of the incarnate God born as a baby in Bethlehem is that all of us, 
Judeans, kings, magi from the east, we are all caught up in the divine love of God born in the child of Jesus. And in Christ, we have been drawn to God like we're drawn home by the love of others. And in Christ, we are drawn together so that we are bound together with our neighbors and our enemies and our friends and our co-workers, all of us created in the image of God, all of us drawn to God through this child born as God with us. And so the revealing of Epiphany is indeed something awesome, something that sparks wonder at the world around us and God's work in our world. Herod couldn't see the beauty of it. Herod could only see some threat to his power. But the beauty of our massive world that we can't control, and yet the beautiful interconnections of everything around us, that's what the Magi could see as they followed that star to the newborn God with us. So I don't intend to weigh in this morning on whether or not you should set new and more ambitious goals this year, whether you should set some resolutions for 2022. But I will tell you the truth. And that truth is that God is inviting you home. God is inviting you to discover hope, love, joy, and peace this year, and that you can move forward with confidence that God is still active in this world. You don't need to enter this year with fear, because you can walk through fearful circumstances knowing that the presence of God is with you, that all the people around you, all the neighbors you hardly speak to, all the people watching on YouTube, we are all connected by this divine love of God that invites us on. Stars are there to guide us if we will look. And in fact, as Jonathan told our children, we are going to give you a star to take with you today. A, a sign to help you see God in the world around you in the year to come. Because like magic, we're all chasing stars. We're all looking for the things to guide us home to God. Looking for a sign to follow or an action we can do that will let us hear the voice of God saying, here's your star. Come on. Thanks be to God.
to bring them here. We look back on the years, the year gone by, and we see so many things, things that grieve us, that cause us to rejoice, that surprise us in ways both good and bad. For your church, O oh Lord, we are not strangers to acknowledging highs and lows, the births and deaths, exciting opportunities and unfulfilled hopes. And in it all, you are the faithful God who stays with us. In heights of joy, in the valley of the shadow of death, and in the level places of ordinary tasks, you walk with us. As we enter a new year in the sacred light of Epiphany, we sense anew how much we need your providential presence today. We know that in past months, loved ones have died, precious jobs were terminated, illnesses were diagnosed, and uncertainty has been our constant companion. We do not have eyesight that can penetrate the months ahead in this new month and year. And so all we can do is petition you for mercy and for strength to face what is to come. And so we pray that you will keep us and our communities in good health, in safety, and in the knowledge that we are loved by you and also by family and friends. We need that sense of love, O oh God, because so many endured the holiday season with only a grim determination to help them keep getting out of bed in the morning. And so for those who are enduring loneliness and continued uncertainty, for the impoverished, for the abused and abandoned, minister to them and help us to minister to those who find our world a barren and cold place this morning. Befriend the friendless, swaddle and love the unloved, take compassion on the bereft, the childless, the lonely. Invite all of us home this day. And hear us as we pray together this morning, joining our hearts in the words Christ Jesus taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Well, once again, welcome to this moment of worship. Whether you're here in the sanctuary, whether you're joining us on the live stream, joining us by watching this later on in the week, know that as one community of faith, no matter where we are, no matter when and what time we come to worship, we come together as one community, one people before God. And once again, a blessed New Year to all of you. No matter where you find yourself, where you find your feelings this day, we hope that in this moment, at least, you feel that peace of God wash over you. A few announcements as we do move into the weeks and the month ahead. All of our programs are still on break for this week, including our choir and all the rest, but have a look in the back of your bulletin or in the weekly email for when each activity is resuming. Bible study is joining again next week, Sunday, over Zoom, as well as the crash. Other things will gradually uh, start again later on in the month. Of course, that is all contingent on whatever we might be able to do in this month ahead. So as always, please keep an eye out on your weekly email, however you get your communication from us to see what might lie ahead. We ask you as well to continue to be mindful of those around you, to be mindful of all that come into the space together, and we thank you for doing that throughout the year 
as well. And so please do remember, if you come to worship, to wear a mask, to take a lateral flow test beforehand so that we can keep each other as safe as possible and continue to worship God together in this space. One more thank you to Regina for crafting these stars for us so lovingly this day. We hope that they might be a reminder of whatever you need on your heart throughout the year, whether you know it now, whether you see your word and are trying to pray and think about what it might mean for your life. Pray that you might take it with you as a symbol and a sign of God throughout the year. And if you are not here with us today and would like a star or know of someone who would like one, please get in touch with Jerry, Jennifer, or I, and we will make sure you get one via mail, via hand delivery, whatever else. We will get you an Epiphany star for you to take in this year. But for now, as we move into our final song together, singing the joys of Christmas, the joys of Advent, the joy of Christ in our lives, I would like you to contemplate what other joys are on your heart this day, to offer them up through an offering of your time, your talents, your skills, and an offering of your resources as well. If you'd like to give in this space, we will have an offering plate at the back. Otherwise, the bank details can be found at the bottom of this YouTube video. And as we move into this next year, we'd like to especially thank you for all that you have done, all that you've contrib contributed, whether that be your resources or your time, to the life of the church in this past year. We could not sustain our ministry, our mission in this city without you and without your generosity, without God before us. So thank you. Thanks be to God. Amen. Would you please stand for joy to the world? I pray that as you go from this place, you will go and make your decisions for the coming year in the confidence of God's divine love and in your own loving actions for the people around you. And I pray that these stars and the stars you see in the world around you will help you see God and help you hear the voice of God inviting you home. As you go, may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the divine light shine upon you and be gracious to you. May God's own face turn toward you and give you peace. Amen.